Pour you and your cake. God, it's a chocolate lava cake. Hey, get in here. Dallas is about to start. Welcome to the Ewing Barbecue, where we are apologetic when we thought we did something wrong. My name is Mary. Now I'm Sarah. I'm Josh, and I'm going to uh, apologize in advance for any future apologies of anything that was apologized for, but not apologized, and then unapologetically apologized for. <laughs> Mostly if you think you shot someone. Wow. <laughs> I am Melanie, and I apologize for Josh's corny jokes. Oh, <laughs> nice. Ooh, roasted. <laughs> for Josh. Josh there is no him. corny oh, jokes here. Only good jokes. <laughs> oh, corn is good. <laughs> now, what are all y'all's uh, drinking? I know Melanie has probably has some something we have never heard of before. That's something unique and interesting. Called Death to Kettle Sours. What? Ooh, a Peach. sour. <laughs> Nice. By Incendiary Brewing in Winston Salem, North Carolina. I like sours. I do too. It, they shorten it to DTKS. It's a series, so they do like peach and peach mango and peach apricot things like that. So. Nice. Yeah. I never got into apricots. I, right. It's got to be done man- right. Peach mango sounds good. Yeah. I bought peach mango juice uh, not too long ago, and then I got home and it said fruit and vegetable and there was carrot juice in it and i'm going oh god yeah. i don't like vegetables in my juice oh. was, it, was it like v8 splash is that what it no, was no no it was another it was company right. so i didn't think um, i just i just saw a peach mango and i grabbed it i'm like oh that's that's a great combination i'm gonna take it and then i got home and i i powered my way through though uh, but not not again i'm gonna be a little more cautious when i look at the uh, labels <laughs> see i always liked v8 juice i, I love v8 I, I see, that's the shit yeah. mm-hmm. i don't think vegetables should be in my juice you can have it in your juice but i can put them in mine i love it uh, i'm, I'm, just gonna, like I'm gonna stick to this <laughs> bottle of jru and bourbon off. tonight though forget the juice huh. i'm gonna hit the hard stuff cool because we get some hard <laughs> stuff going on here tonight i'm just drinking those because of my headache, I just wanted some things. So I'm drinking that seltzer beer. If it's just like the Bud Light kind, but it's really good. It's the nice. cranberry so, one. I was at the no. dispensary today. I'm going to say that Massachusetts, you can go there. And they actually have seltzers that are cannabis infused in the cooler what? right there at the mm-hmm. uh, dispensary. We have them here too now. I had not seen that. So I picked up the flyer for a future reference, but uh, that was my first trip in the dispensary. Yes, I'm saying that on the air here. <laughs> It's legal. It's cool. It's Every legal. time I go to state, I'm going to Vegas in a month. I'll be there. And when we were in Portland, we went like four times when we were there. Yeah. So. We have one like 10 minutes from my house. Oh. Yep. Okay. How's that? Still in the Bible here. Belt. Not here. <laughs> well, I mean, it's really not here. But, you know. No. But you, you won't lose your entire fucking career if you test positive either, so. You know. So stupid. I'm not driving a fucking truck. Leave me alone. Mm -hmm. Like it has nothing to do with what I do Monday through Friday morning. (laughs) It really doesn't. No, it doesn't. I agree. If you're not going to work in your eight hour work shift, then what does it matter? No. I mean, common sense people, you wouldn't go and like show up on the job, like three sheets to the wind with alcohol. So like, why would you do it? You know, right. if you're going to show up with alcohol, yeah. you got to have a good buzz on like Larry had during the shooting. <laughs> right. that, was, that was different. I mean, I feel like that that was different. <laughs> That's it's Larry fucking Hagman. He can do whatever he wants. Larry <laughs> right. fucking Hagman. Do we have any do you guys have any uh housekeeping? Anybody else first? I have some. Okay, go go ahead. Okay. So First and foremost, I would like to buy a drink for a person who bought a drink for us and donated to the Bourbon Fund. Thank you, Jennifer B. She Aww. wrote, you guys are the best. Thank you so much for all that you're doing. I could listen to you all day, every day. Yay. Aww. Thank you. That's high praise because I can't even listen to me every day, all day. I figure so. I probably shouldn't <laughs> say people's last names unless they say it. It's probably not. A thing so um and then i thought i actually went and looked at some of our reviews and i collected a, a couple of our reviews and i thought that i would share those um so someone who calls himself bd calhoun 
<laughs> wrote, I love Dallas and I love the podcast. I think a new drinking game should be every time Josh refers to Keenan Wynn as the Winter Warlock. <laughs> uh, that's true. Yeah, but that's it'll, true. It will probably come up again sometime, maybe. So it'll be like a it'll be like a devil shot drink if that comes there up. There we go. Yeah. There uh, you go. A, I don't, I'm, I'm going to not, I'm going to spell this because I don't know how it's supposed to be pronounced. It's A-J-E-R-N-B-S-N wrote, uh, I watched the original Dallas years ago and recently started rewatching during this pandemic. So many great memories <laughs> watching this show with my mom and dad back in the day. I happened to find this podcast and I'm loving it. You guys are doing a fabulous job and you simply must go all the way through the entire series. Keep the episodes coming. We're going to try. <laughs> wow. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. And then one more. Uh, this is me. from Mouse Kerper. Wrote, hmm. Big Dallas mood for Big Dallas fans. New Dallas fan of the show, thanks to quarantine. Big fan of the pod. Y'all have me armed with so much useless Dallas no Dallas knowledge and no one to talk about it with. I feel that. Uh, XOXO, mm -hmm. friend of the pod slash millennial Dallas fan. Millennial Dallas fan. Go yeah, you. Yeah, we need more of those. Yes. I've noticed that one of my Instagram followers who was a former camper of mine i don't know what his stat what their status is you know with all the quarantines and everything mm -hmm. they've got to be about i don't know there must be 14 15 now they've started watching dallas and they do follow us on instagram oh cool oh. that's awesome so and i'd like to we're, up. We're we'll, we'll, we'll just shout out to the first name finn okay finn. Yeah. We are not kid friendly. So finn if your parents are listening to this we do not condone <laughs> however we we do condone yeah, I, but it's more <laughs> I, I can do it. Just don't tell your parents I said that. Basically. <laughs> and so. I'd like to give a shout out really quick to uh, followers of our Instagram who run a really cool YouTube channel called Our 80s Life. It's Abby and Keith. Ooh. They have they live, I guess, in Dallas or around T Dallas. And they have gone and started finding locations from the TV show. In real that's, life. That's, so cool. that's really cool. So Head on over to Thanksgiving Park while you're out there, too. Yeah. I have, well, I think I have three things. Okay. One of them was to do with that, that you just, the last review you did. Wait, first of all, some of the YouTube channel again. Oh, it is Our 80s Life. I will post it in our yeah. Facebook group for sure, but it's Our 80s Life and Abby and Keith. Okay. And then the second thing was, this is so random, but I think pretty much all of y'all are going to think the same thing, I think. But if anybody, you know how, like, if you, we're all, like, all of our names, people know who we are on our Facebook podcast, Facebook yeah, page, yeah. which is totally fine. We, if we mm -hmm. cared, we wouldn't put our names on there. Sure. But just if anybody sends a friend request and I decline it, it's not because I'm being an asshole. It's just, I'm being very, we just have been, mm -hmm. there's been a lot of weird people lately, not di like just different people. So yeah. I'm just being real. Like, so if you ever want to like friend us on Facebook, like they just send me a private message and say, I follow your podcast. Just so I know who you are. I'm gonna double I, that. I'm gonna I've, been, double that. I've been going through a mm -hmm. lot of people lately. And I just, at first I was just accepting because I thought they were friends. And like one of them, I think was, cause I saw like a comment or something, which is completely fine. But mm -hmm. then there was like other people and I wasn't trying to be an asshole. It just, and they weren't being and we they weren't being weird or anything. It's just like I don't want a bunch of like random people I don't know. You know, I post pictures well, of my kids and our family and things totally, like that. Yeah. So, and I don't have to do that, but and it doesn't bother me. I just wanted to say it out loud. But, um, and I know when yeah. I get on the rare times that I get these friend requests on Facebook lately, it's I have to have X number of mutual friends in common before I will accept. I was like, well, maybe then I start thinking, well, maybe I'm just saying no to these people, but they're followers. And I'm, and so I'm not being an asshole. So if you no. didn't get a thing, you can send it again. You're not, if you you're not being say, an asshole. I, okay. I had, to, I used to have my face or my Instagram be public. And I, don't even, I had to shut it down last year because I had a weird, creepy stalker. And that's why I don't have much Twitter like that. Pictures off of my Instagram and a friend of mine Instagram and starting this weirdo other Instagram that was really Same. gross and like intercutting pictures of us with like porn. It was awful. Oh my God. <laughs> it was terrible. It's all very fancy. Some people got a lot of time on their hands out there. And does anyone ever get those fake Josh Anderson friend requests and 
Oh no, really I didn't. Him. I haven't got those. Oh yeah, uh, I always, I always message him privately and I say, um, "Dude, there's another one that's uh, pretending to be." There's another one. Just he reports it. Everybody reports it, and then yeah. Was that your three? I had another one, but I can't remember because I do that all the time. So I'll think about it later. So let's just go on now. Yep. Uh, okay. I want to send out uh, get well wishes to Morgan Fairchild, who actually just had hip replacement surgery. Oh, man. oh my God. And I think she I think she lost her cat, too. So Aww. she's... Oh. Well, speedy recovery, Morgan. Yep. And um, if <laughs> speaking of online stuff... Um, as most people know by now, Linda Pearl and Patrick Duffy have become an item mm-hmm. during quarantine. Ooh, Linda Pearl, who used to awesome. be on Matlock <laughs> and uh, Happy Days. They have been dating a little while, but it's been kind of high shy. Right. Uh, she was going to, she was involved with Fonzie during the later years. And I think. Was she the leather, leather Tuscadero? No. no. Pinky doesn't know. Was Pinky. She, wait. But she's like leather Tuscadero. What's her she, name? I think her. I think she had a daughter on the show played by Heather O'Rourke. Heather O'Rourke. Okay, yeah, I know. Yeah. I know who she is then. Yeah, um, but they've they went up to Ashley. Uh, Ashley. Ashley. Okay. Ashley. Yeah, they went up to Canada, uh, Vancouver, and you have to quarantine. So they were quarantining for fourteen days together. Lynn, uh, Lynn, not yeah, Linda Pearl and Patrick. Hey, now that he has two Lindas in his life. I have to specify which one. Mm-hmm. Um. So on Linda Pearl's Facebook page, she has been posting funny videos that the two of them have been recording during quarantine for 14 days. So it's it's been very entertaining watching Linda and Patrick uh, quarantine uh, for 14 days and up there in Canada. So if anyone follows Linda Pearl on or likes her page, uh, you'll see the videos up there. And they're cool. going to be on Entertainment Tonight together uh, soon because they just recorded as as everyone knows, I've been gathering the um, doing the birthday and death anniversary yeah, calendar, yeah. and um, I picked up uh, pick up with April eleventh. Uh, just kind of get the back part okay. of the month here. Uh, James L. Brown, who played Harry McSween, died on that day, in nineteen ninety two. Mm-hmm. April thirteenth, Howard Keel would have uh, been one hundred and two. Mm-hmm. And Stephanie Blackmore, who played Serena, was born on that day, 1948. Uh, Randy Powell, Alan Beam, was bo- uh, celebrated a birthday April 14th. He's 71. Beam's Lo- Jim Rugg was born. <laughs> yep. Lois Childs, who played Holly Harwood, was born uh, a- April 15th, 1947. I'm not doing my math right now. So she's 70. Math is overrated. 74. 70. Uh, yeah. Of course, this week we have the anniversary of Ken Kershaw's passing on the twenty first. Mm. That's right because it was right after we started this podcast. Yep, we I did know, a special episode. Maybe so we'll much. maybe we'll uh, bump it up uh, on yeah. Wednesday. Yeah, if you haven't so. listened to that one, check it out. We did a special memorial thing for him. He and was we it. Actually, um, we actually have audio from some from one of his Ultimate Dallas interviews. In I can't first. remember. Mary, was that the thirtieth or the fortieth where he was sat? He sat up by the pool and smoked a cigarette. We talked to him. He was the fortieth, thirtieth, thirtieth. That's what it was then. It was started, and he was he was sitting out by the pool, and people were trying to talk to him, and I was like, everybody's bothering me, so I just kind of like stood to the side, and then I was like, "Hello, I'm Sarah." <laughs> like it was very fan <laughs> creepy, and then I ran away. <laughs> but I was like, I want to ask his autograph. He was just trying to enjoy his cigarette. And I yeah, said, he was just boy. I know what you're trying to do. Yeah. So anyway, I didn't bug him, but he was so cute. I just want to give him a big hug. <laughs> a Barnes at a Ewing barbecue. Go figure. I know, right. <laughs> Uh, also, uh, it's interesting. Burt Remsen, who played Dandy Dandridge, uh, who was involved with Ken Kershaw's character, he passed on April twenty second, nineteen ninety nine. And then one for next week is uh, Jordana Brewster's birthday is on April twenty sixth, which is the anniversary of Jim Davis's death, which will be forty years. Oh wow! What year was she born? I think she's younger than me. Uh, like 81, maybe somewhere around there. I don't, I just like wrote it. I don't, I didn't write the year that's because okay. I knew, that's fine. I, I, thought, I, I knew when her birthday was, so I just kind of wrote that down. Yeah, but, that's fine. Yeah, cool. That's all, all right. I got for now. That's it. Mel, do you have anything? <laughs> no, all right. Should we get into it? 
All right. Let's do this. Let's Let's do it. You good, Sarah? <laughs> Tonight, we are reviewing Season 4, Episode 2, No More Mr. Nice Guy, Part 2, Electric Boots. Done. No. Here are some scenes from the first part of tonight's story. How bad is he? I wish I could be more reassuring. We're moving him into intensive care. I must have shot you on it. Sue Ellen, don't do anything foolish! Ewing 4, Ewing 4, please pull over. State police business. I think I'm gonna get a ticket! What's going on? We've been asked to check you back to Dallas. What? Mr. J.R. Ewing's been shot. His blood pressure's falling. That's what I was afraid of. He must be bleeding again. It's most likely the spleen. Let's get him to OR now. Will he live? Do you really care, Sue Ellen? Your husband may be dying. You're out gallivanting around someplace. Sue Ellen was sick. Sick? You mean drunk? After I left Dr. Elby's office, I went across the street for a drink. My nerves. And then I don't remember anything until I woke up at the airport. Yeah, I was right. The Elby hadn't done you a bit of good. You need to be back in that sanitarium. Tony, can you get the bullet? Yes. Got it. You just made the police force very happy. Gary. Mama, Mama, you still there? Daddy, Grandma needs you. She really does. All right, tell her I can get a plane that'll get me there about 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. We removed one bullet. The second bullet appears to be lodged in the spinal canal. To remove it is, is very... Very delicate surgery. Ewing oil has been my life, Ellie. And JR may be dying because of it. I don't think the company is worth my family. I want Bobby home. No matter what it costs, Ewing oil. Jock has named you as a prime suspect in JR shooting. I certainly had enough motive. And if anybody deserves shooting, it's JR. Where is he, Mother? He's very weak. Doctor said just a few minutes. Mr. Ewing, we gotta know something. We shot you, Mr. Ewing. Written by Arthur Bernard Lewis, directed by Leonard Katzman, and aired November 9th, 1980. And let's see, some casting notes. Lee McCluskey makes his first appearance yes. as Mitch Cooper. You guys, I actually, stand Mitch McCluskey so hard. Lee McCluskey. <laughs> what did I just say? Mitch McCluskey. Did I say? <laughs> I, didn't even, I, didn't, I didn't even have. Don't even alcohol, go there. Just coffee. Lee McCluskey, <laughs> I stand but him hardcore. He. He doesn't have a character name in this episode, as we. No, he, he does nobody not. Nobody refers to him by name in this episode. No, but we know. And it's yeah, interesting does. because Mitch McCloskey. <laughs> Mitch McCloskey. Where'd that come from? I don't know. I follow him on Facebook and I love him. I love he him. was in a serial in 1979 called, not um, an edible serial, but a show called Married the First Year, he, yes. which also had future uh, Dallas cast members Claudette Nevin and Kay Callan. He also went to Juilliard School for acting and was in class with Robin Williams. And, uh, oh, God, it just left my brain. Someone else. It's and come to if me. you look uh, poolside, you will notice uh, future Northern Exposure star Janine Turner is one of Lucy's friends. His wife, Carla, who he's been married to for a million years, worked on Gilmore Girls. Okay. He was also in a TV movie with Linda Gray in 1994 called Accidental Meeting. And he was on Santa Barbara as Zach Hilton and Ethan Asher in the late 80s. Okay, uh, yeah, and so there was that. Janine Turner, obviously, uh, was in this episode. Which one was she? Was she the one, the first one, one where of, we just saw her boobs and her butt? No, she was one face? of Lucy's friends at the pool. Yeah, there's the, there was the one, like, it cuts to, I'm going to talk about it. She's but, like, like the redhead. The scene starts and all you see are her boobs and then she turns around and walks away and you just see her butt, but you don't see her face till like the very last second. Not her. She's already sitting in the chair. Okay. 
And, and she like, went I on knew to, who she uh, was right away when I, I was like, there's Jimmy Turner. Okay. She went on to <laughs> Cliffhanger with Sylvester Stallone and Northern Exposure were two of oh. her. And I'm she was on Strong Northern Medicine Someday. on Lifetime. And Royce Applegate, who played uh, Detective Crabbe in the episode. Uh-huh. He, um, I didn't even realize that was Royce Applegate. He was also in Twin Peaks. Yeah, and he was in Splash, The Rookie, Jag, and Chips also. But he died on New Year's Day 2003 at the age of 63 in a house fire. Oof. Which That's is the same, Which is the same way that Dennis Patrick died in a house fire. He played Von Leland. Uh, this was a special Sunday night episode that was the final of six episodes promoted as Dallas Week, and it was the number one show of the week with a 40 rating and a 59 share. And a lot was going on as we were trying to figure out who shot JR, and the one piece of that I'll throw out this week were the bookies in Las Vegas that were taking odds. Yeah. on who shot JR and Dusty Farlow was favored at two to one. Ooh, that would have been a good one. I probably would have thought something like that. Uh, that's so, kind of way Like I, he wasn't I really would... dead and he's going to come <laughs> yeah, back and shoot definitely. JR. That would have been interesting. Uh, yeah. Sue Ellen was next at three to one odds, followed by Kristen at four to one odds. Cliff Barnes and Alan Beam tied for seven to one. Bobby, Pam, and Miss Ellie were 12 to 1, and Jock was at 14 to 1. And um, Miss Ellie was more likely to shoot JR than Jock. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I think back the, the second time I watched it, I think I was thinking it was going to be like Bone Leland or something like that. Like, mm. I, don't, I don't think I ever thought Kristen. I, and I never thought Linda Gray or Sue Ellen. I can't remember yeah. that. How long ago. I knew I knew who did it before I ever saw that season. So yeah. it's kind of hard because like I already knew. Oh mm-hmm. uh, yeah. yeah. And People Magazine had their own um, their own poll with Dusty winning 21 percent of the vote, Kristen at fourteen percent, Von Leland thirteen percent, Sue Ellen eight percent, Miss Ellie at seven percent. Lucy and Alan Beam, that would have been a tag team, I guess. I don't know. At 5%. <laughs> Cliff Barnes at 4%. Dr. Elby and Jock Ewing tied at 3%. And Bobby and, and JR Not himself healthy. were voted at 2%. <laughs> JR himself. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Uh, on, that note, uh, on that note, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stop right there. We'll save some more. Save some more for the save some more of the hype uh, between season hype for the next episode. Yeah, like, yes, I, yes. I feel like Doctor Elby. That would be highly, highly unethical, sir. <laughs> just a little bit. He's <laughs> <laughs> got really emotionally involved. I guess. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 he was having a bad hair day, which was every day. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mostly in this episode. Oh, okay. Let's start it. So we pick up from where we left off on the last episode with JR at the hospital. They're asking Mr. Ewing, who did it? And he takes a very like pregnant pause. Like, yeah, everyone's sitting there looking at him like, and, and the, he's like every, looking everyone at is, everyone. Everyone like, is what? staring at their TVs at home. I can imagine like, yes, yes. What did you see? Come on. And then he's just like, well, I don't know. It was too dark. And then I don't, and then I don't remember. <laughs> and he's, he's groggy as hell. Like yeah. he's, they've got the morphine drip on him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then he, and then he's out and everybody leaves yep. and Sue Ellen. She's like, him, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. She's so, she's just like, oh, I'm so, so sorry. <sighs> now she's going into full wounded bird mode here. Like t- trying uh-huh. to tend to the wounded bird, you know? Yes. It's yes. Like, well, girl and feels a little bit guilty because she thinks she shot him. <laughs> right. But even when he's vulnerable, it's I think it's going to be a reoccurring, reoccurring theme through the series. She mm-hmm. she swoops in like m- mother hen and tries to. Like, how do you set a Sue Ellen trap? Just have a really like vulnerable JR. Yes. Constantly. Wounded or crying. She, she can't she resist can't him. Mm-mm. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice. No. Fool me ten fucking A times and seven oh. times. Yeah. yeah. Now I like I like these 
ep- crossover episodes when Gary shows up. I, I just mm-hmm. like seeing him come to the ranch and just, you know, that whole little like, oh, let's bring a little Knott's Landing over to Dallas. And uh, and they always bring- have to give you like a little recounting of what's happening on Knott's Landing. That's right. <laughs> Which we kind of find out that like Gary hit rock bottom. And yep. now he's in recovery. I'm assuming AA. I didn't. I didn't watch Knots Landing, so I'm just getting all of my Knots Landing information from Dallas. Right. And um, he got through it. Uh, well, we'll hear it later when he talks to Maselli. We'll get, we'll get there. I, would, I don't want to jump jump ahead. True. True. But uh, he comes. Lucy drives with him to South Fork. Um, Ellie and Jock are really excited to see him. And it's nice to see Jock so happy to see him because that hasn't been that much of a thing thus far yeah. in Dallas. And they are on location again because you see the car mm-hmm. driving mm-hmm. Up, the, up the drive. And then Lucy is so excited to see him. And she's just like hanging on to his hand. And, and he is literally like, hey, can you stop? I don't even know who you are. <laughs> Why she, are you, she's who are got, you again? you're that poison dwarf that sleeps with the older men right uh <laughs> he like literally is just like can you let go of my hand i i i don't know and she's why got this, you're doing that she's got this shit-eating grin on her face like oh because ooh, she's look so at him he's so pretty he's here he's here my daddy well dad uh, and he does not give a shit at all no and we're gonna we're gonna i'm gonna allude to that later in a conversation <laughs> <laughs> And then instead, he's just like, hey, where's Sue Ellen? And she's like, well, she's up with the baby. And then he's like, oh, that's right. I have a nephew. Okay, I'm going to go see him. Bye. And leaves. And then Jock asks Bobby to run you in oil. Yeah. And Bobby kind of wants to just, like, nope out of that whole situation. He wants wants to nope rope out of... uh... (laughs) He's kind of like, "Um, you remember I was fucking leaving with my wife like we were leaving the damn state right, right. like and you want me to stick around giant helicopter pulls over a police yeah. business right. he's, <laughs> he's done with all this business like, he doesn't want it anymore he's like, gonna peace out i was trying to flee you uh-huh. stopped me <laughs> and now and you John, want me right right back john is fine seems fine with him not wanting to he's like oh okay that's fine and then ellie just like stares him down she's like no you nope you're gonna run ewing oil bobby right right jock and Jock's like, oh, yeah, you should do it, Bobby. <laughs> oh, God. Should have asked Sue Ellen to do it. Be like, hey, get in there and, and do Ooh. shit. You've been watching him long enough. She'd be like, ah. I would have liked that. He yeah. totally <laughs> would blow a gasket in 2021 because nobody lives in their house. You know, yeah, she, went, she would not handle that very well. No. Mm. No, no. Well, they would all be, be if Miss Ellie was still there, they would all still be there. Miss Ellie would not let them in. Mm-hmm. And if they did leave, she'd be, I don't know, she'd be at Dr. Elby's office. I don't <laughs> yes. <laughs> she'd yes. be in serious therapy. Yeah. So then Gary, I guess, is bonding with John Ross, but like the kid actor is not into it at all. <laughs> He's just crying. <laughs> yeah, Ty- and that's the- Tyler Banks, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. It turns into an after school special. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> yeah, because Gary brings up Sue Ellen's accident and you know the drinking and she gets very defensive just a wee bit yeah denial ain't just a river in egypt sue ellen right i'm then, not an alcoholic yeah she's like no i just you know i just drink once in a while and black out and once i drink i can't stop that doesn't make me an alcoholic right no i'm fine and, and gary talks about how he was a violent drunk and if for anyone out there that was watching Knott's Landing and knew what how that first season ended, they would know that Gary was a violent drunk. And he... Uh, Sue Ellen got mad and threw shit. It was not pretty. She she destroyed that hotel room, if I remember correctly. Which we never saw. I wish we would have seen that. I wish we would have seen it. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that would have been a good scene. And then he says, uh, you can lick it if you want to, which... uh, like, I've never been in AA, but I don't think that's really an AA thing that you lick it. Because you don't, the whole thing is you don't lick it. The thing is you do it one day at a time. And I don't think they say lick it. Right. That's not in the AA literature. Um, I, I, no. Again, not in AA, but I would put money on that one. Then the next scene. Bobby and Gary pull over outside the 
making more use of being on location in Texas with the driving and the outside yeah. of the ranch and the just the beauty of the landscape. And what I find interesting is, um, sorry to leave Melanie out because she hasn't had the opportunity to go down to South Fork yet, but mm-hmm. we will correct that at some point. Yay! Just noticing between then and now how much the trees have grown and how much the landscape has changed. How much has been built on South Fork? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. But it's just a beautiful. But I couldn't stop myself from being like, I was right where they're standing <laughs> when they're in that scene. That's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. It is. <laughs> um, but then they talk about how uh, Bobby has the same Achilles heel that Gary does. And I guess that's having a conscience is the Achilles heel. <laughs> Yes. All and right. We, that's that's exactly what I put. I said, is that a problem? <laughs> right. Is that not good? Right. That's a, yeah. Oops. But once you give up integrity, the rest is a piece of cake. But um, Ugh. And then they uh, we, lament that uh, if JR hadn't been shot, they would have been surfing in the Pacific because Bobby had been on his way to visit Gary and that their older brother determines their destinies, which I thought was kind of deep. That would be a scene we would want to see. Uh, uh, Gary and Bobby trying to figure out surfing in the Pacific Ocean. I feel like they'd be terrible, but I'd watch every second of it. <laughs> it was like when, um, again, going over to Knott's Landing, when Lucy visited Knott's Landing in episode six of their first season. Mm-hmm. I've seen that one. Yeah, and they're they're running in the ocean at the end. Lucy, Gary, and Val, and they're running in the ocean again. It's just like um, hmm. Lucy at the ocean. I wonder if she would have been better served on Knott's Landing, but that's something we might bring up with Charlene Tilton if we, once we get her I'm shocked they didn't just have her go to Knott's Landing, honestly. Well, I I had that, like, I was thinking that before, is like, you're taking her off the show because she doesn't really have a lot of, I guess, storylines. You know, they didn't know what to Mm -hmm. do with her. And so why not take this country girl and send her over to California? You know what I mean? Like, and throw her into Knott's Landing, I would think. But I don't know. She would have mixed it up interestingly over there but i think so too yeah it's weird. And it would have really explored but. the dynamic between her and her parents uh, mm-hmm. and how they don't know who she is yes <laughs> and don't care yeah but in the in the episode that she was away. there the confrontation between her and gary is that he didn't want her using the credit cards mm. you know just charging everything and running up bills like the spoiled way that she would do back in dallas right because she could because she's just a rich girl right well, as I said, but here's here's my thought process on that. Then, if you want to raise your child, don't trap them off with your parents and leave exactly. forever. Exactly. So if they're going to spoil her rotten and whatever they do to make her happy, it might be wrong. But I don't think Daddy was there or Mommy right. was there to raise exactly. her. So exactly. Be happy for what she has, I guess. And again, that comes back to Jr. having a hand in. <laughs> Exactly, mm-hmm. on both of them. Yes. So. Oh, JR, your tentacles reach so far and wide. That's very true. Um, then we cut to the hospital where Suellen is sitting in the hospital with JR, and he really wants to see John Ross. He seems really, like, down. And then we right. find out the reason is, like, he can't feel his legs, and he's worried that he's paralyzed. Yes. And Sue Ellen is being, again, overly nice and overly helpful, and mm-hmm. she's... It makes me giggle. Just <laughs> to watch her be like, oh, J.R. Regular angel of mercy, isn't she now? Right. <laughs> then the doc says that there is paralysis, but they don't know if it's permanent or not. Uh, but he needs surgery. And then Miss Ellie gets all like, best get the best goddamn people in the world here right now to work Dr. on him. Dr. Cal Roeclair, who actually happens to be from Dallas, but he's in London on a conference. Right. It's convenient. convenient that he happens to be from Dallas. Very convenient. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He, he couldn't be up in Chicago or New York or something. Yes, he, he has to be from Dallas. Right. And then Sue Ellen freaks out because she really doesn't want the surgery to happen at all because there, the doctor says that there is a chance that the surgery could also kill him. And Sue Ellen's just like, no, 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 we're not taking that chance. Right. And, and then Gary chimes in that, oh, you know, it's what's for, for the best and all this. And she goes, what do you know about this? And what do you know about anything? Yeah, she like lashes out at Hello. Gary 
over. Like, nothing. Yeah. Like, what are you doing, Swellen? All right. Well, that's because JR is not able to lash out at Gary. <laughs> right. For, so she's lashing out for him. <laughs> on his, on his behalf. It's her, it's her conscience. Yeah, it's her conscience because you're like, uh-huh. see, she thinks she might have mm-hmm. done it and she's trying to like. Yep, yep. So then Pam is home alone at Suffolk because she does not give a shit about JR. So she's not even going to pretend at the uh, hospital. Well, uh, yeah. well, I just had one more oh, sure. thing that um, get, Gary didn't think he should go into CJR right away. Oh, right. I mean, and um, Jock wanted to talk to JR alone, which we never saw that conversation. And then Bobby went back to the office. And then Ellie and Gary go to take their walk. Mm hmm. And we'll get some more Knots Landing exposition on that during their walk a little bit later. Mm -hmm. And now we're back to Pam. Yeah. Where she's home alone, just lounging, and she turns on the TV and we find out the news that Von Leland has been let go by the police because he has a solid alibi. Yes. He was in the office of his attorney filing bankruptcy. Yeah. At the time. But I'm I'm curious what war was going on because the first they always give like a the back end of a irrelevant news story mm-hmm. right before mm-hmm. they and some of them I want to know yeah. what's going on because it said <laughs> the president hopes for a settlement in the costly war and I'm sitting there going what what war right because we definitely were not <laughs> at war in 1980 in America no. No, I mean, did we have troops somewhere? I mean, if somebody out there wants to look that up. Yeah, that would be interesting to know. I'd be curious to know. Yeah. So Sue Ellen goes to see Dr. LB and admits that she thinks that she shot him because she wanted to kill him. She had a gun and she blacked out. Doesn't look good. No. She had the gun in her purse at her last appointment, she tells him. And... He's like, you're yeah. blacking out. That's yeah. uh, no bueno <laughs> there. Uh, not good. Yeah. She's having an That's identity crisis news. over her yeah. feelings for JR as well. A very yeah. severe right. identity crisis. Right. She, she, uh-huh. And I like when how LB deflects the question when she asks if he thinks she shot JR. And he said it's it's pointless to speculate at the, you know. I mean, is he not worried about it? <laughs> well, probably because he might like if she, he would probably legally have to go to the police if like she admitted it. So he's yeah. kind of like, don't put me in that position. Right. Shush. That's Shush. <laughs> and, and then she brings up Gary thinking that she's an alcoholic. Right. Which is super defensive. Like you, I'm not right. <laughs> and he's like, well, I don't know. Yeah. A little bit. You're blacking out. I mean, yeah, uh, maybe. <sighs> I mean, you know, if it if it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, or it, it's it's a duck, I mean, right? You know. Also, LB's hair in this scene, I can't handle it. Yeah, well, who who's this barber? What what it, is happening? It gets worse though. Every it gets worse every episode. <laughs> you go back and watch them. Every single one it gets but worse he, on the first next. First, he one. went from that poofy helmety hair, and then he goes out and gets a haircut. It's a haircut, and then it looks like he might have put a little bit of gel or something into it, and it's like poofy in some part, but then has like a little mullety thing on the bottom. But it's only just like a little, like it's shaped. I don't understand what's happening. I need to. I have to look at this right now. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> it's not good. Okay, so then Gary fills Ellie in on the goings on in Knott's Landing. Right, and this is the only time that other characters on Knott's Landing are mentioned. Karen on Fairgate. Dallas. Oh, mm-hmm. Sid and Karen Fairgate, hmm. and that's Sid played by Don Murray, who turned up in season three of Twin Peaks: The Return. He played uh, Bushnell Mullins. Oh, okay, yeah. 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 And he's about ninety ninety one now, so he's he's up there. He's older, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, uh, so Miss Ellie wants Gary to move back to Dallas, and he's all like, yeah, I don't know. That's probably not going to happen, but all right. And then... Uh, it, here, then here, here's the interesting thing. He goes, he, he was, th- you know, he thinks of her and Bobby, and then there's the mention of JR and Jock being so tough, but does he mention Lucy at all? No. no, no, not even no. a little bit. No, no, no. Well, let's do some more Gary, Gary 
ignoring Lucy bashing here. Uh. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's he's forgotten who that is once again. No idea. And then uh, uh, Miss Sally, it, just, it said, just blows my mind. It, it's not even subtle. Like not even no. subtle. Mm. I thought it was funny though in the scene where he says um, something about how close Jock and. Uh, J.R.R. And then uh, she, then Miss Ellie says, you know, we both love all of our kids exactly the same. Which is <laughs> such bullshit. That's like, bullshit. everybody knows this is bullshit. That's why they live. Yeah. And you know something? You talk about strength in the children of, mm-hmm. you know, J.R. and Bobby and mm-hmm. Gary. Gary is the only one that had the strength to move away and start his own life away. Yeah. So that kind of makes him the strongest one. Totally. Live life on his own, away right. from like the U.S. He's the only one that actually privileges. left and stayed just, yeah. That cracks me up because so, I'm sorry, JR is like, oh, Gary's weakling and, and Bobby's too good and manly. Man. I'm like, dude, you haven't moved out your mama's house. You you brought your wife I think home. JR is in Yeah. I mean, people. like, Literally, literally, you brought your wife home. You brought home. your wife home. It, you're, you're, and you're screwing right down the hall from your parents. Ugh, how, how, uh-huh. I just wonder, yeah. like, right? in, in the Gotta world of, like, <laughs> fantasy TV. And those walls, those walls like, are not thin because they can well, hear things. We've, no, we've heard the like, fights. What was from Sue Ellen's first thought, like, their that. first night in the house after their honeymoon? Was she like, what? This is awkward. I don't like this. <laughs> I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, maybe it's far that, enough away. That's when she probably, probably learned to be quiet. Well, I mean, sex. everybody heard them damn arguing when mm-hmm. the baby was um, small. Yes, that's the true. walls are not that thick. That's true. And then in the first season, you you could like Jock was downstairs listening to Pam and Bobby. Well, they had the window oh. open. Oh. I know. <laughs> but still, I mean, true. But still, well, was this was this yes, when they were at the Close Box Ranch? Yes. And he's sitting outside. Yeah, <laughs> just sitting outside like... <laughs> he's he's like, like he looks at, he looks at JR Jeez, and he's I like, re- yeah, well, they may beat you to it. And JR's like, what the fuck? No. Shut up. <sighs> I remember when Ellie and I used to screw like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Enough, Jack. Enough. <laughs> it approves. <laughs> So Bobby is trying to business well, Bobby is at Ewing Oil, is trying uh, to but no one will listen to him. Uh, oh, wait, to I wanted to say one more thing on um, <laughs> Gary and Miss Ellie's conversation before we oh, sure. run away from that. He leaves the door open to possibly someday going back there. Don't fuel Miss Ellie's fantasy. Yeah. Don't fuel He's your just, mama's fantasy. Just, just you know, you got your her. life in California. Don't. Don't, don't give her false hope. Yeah. Just do not play with Miss Ellie's emotions. Exactly. Because it's going to go on and on and on. Yeah. Uh, just yeah. cut it right there. Or stop. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bobby on the phone with Billy John. Yeah. He's he's trying to be like, <laughs> I'm business guy. I'm answering the and phone. He's like, this sucks. And, and then it's not going well for him. He was um, Connie says that Mary Lee Stone called again. And he's like, all right, get her on the phone for me. And mm-hmm. she fucking takes his call to tell him she's not taking his call. <laughs> How quintessential <laughs> Mary Lee is that? <laughs> I love Very it. Much like, I would love I'm not that. talking to you. I've come here to tell you I'm not talking to you. Okay. Yeah, this obviously is before Mary Lee gets people and starts becoming people and person you know right and i think that starts later this episode i think that that fire gets lit yes. in an upcoming scene but in this yeah. scene, just like i'm not talking to you i'm suing you I, and then he, bobby but, soliloquies that jr would love being sued um, so he'd better not die yeah it, but very importantly bobby feels like a caretaker at the office yeah and connie says that He's a Ewing and he should be able to make these decisions. And Bobby says that, yeah, Jock and JR would not see it that way. I can guarantee you that. Right. 
Which is why he doesn't want to be there because he knows that any decision he makes or anything that he's allowed, like no one's even talking to him on the phone because they know that JR doesn't want them talking to Bobby. So any decision he makes can be overturned. So he's like, why am I even here? Then we cut to the hospital and JR wakes up. Mm -hmm. With Gary sitting and there. Awkward. He's groggy and almost human. Like they need to, I, do they need to keep JR like constantly on a morphine drip because he's like not totally evil. <laughs> right, he's nicer when he's high. <laughs> Gary's actually leaving the next morning to go back to his job in California, and Jr. goes, "Well, I'd I'd rush home too if I live next to a pretty little bundle." Like, like, oh, there's the Jr. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Immediately yeah. he goes to sex. Yep. That's the Jr. Yes. we know and love. Yeah, and <laughs> you know, <laughs> I have to. I do have to say, you know, give. Credit Michelle Lee, the only cast member of Knots Landing that stayed for all 344 episodes. She even during the final season when they were requiring cast members to take some episodes off for budget purposes, she took the actor's minimum so that she could be in every episode because she felt That's it was important. cool. So props out to Michelle Lee. Yeah. That pretty little bundle, Karen Farragut. Yeah. <laughs> And then they talk about playing touch football and it's like, there's almost like a brother bonding moment for a hot second. And that's yeah, weird. That, yeah, that. It just means JR is mm -hmm. on a lot of drugs, you guys. A lot, a lot of medication. A lot of drugs. I but want then, some, I want some of what he's on. <laughs> right. And then Bobby tells him about being asked to run Ewing oil and just all of a sudden the look on JR's face is just like, oh, fuck. And then as Gary's leaving, he goes, JR said, yeah, if mama will let you leave. Right. Because all of a sudden JR's like, oh, shit, like my worst fears are coming true. Bobby's taking over Ewing Oil. Gary's coming back because he's, <laughs> you know, still paranoid. Yeah. So I feel like this fuels him to get better, honestly. Yes. <laughs> and then we have a time jump of a few weeks because Lucy and Janine Turner and other friends are sitting by the pool. And it says... Yeah. A few days, a, rather. This is. is the shot I was talking about earlier. So it starts, and you just see a close-up of boobs. <laughs> boobs. And then boobs. you don't even see her face. And then she turns around ass. and walks away from camera, and it's just an <laughs> ass TNA. shot. So it's just tits and ass. And I'm going to have to look at that, that again, awesome. because I think sometimes when I'm, si you when I'm sitting there taking notes, uh, I'm sometimes... Like, I'm not Looking I'm not down, writing, it. and then I I'm kind of look it. up and I'm listening to the dialogue. <laughs> the three so, of us, the three of us noticed it, and you didn't. I know he doesn't want to be the pervert. Mm. I was writing. Well, you can see it again in the <laughs> next scene that the the teen girls are in when they're in the club too, and that's just all tits. Oh, that's oh, a, that's wow. a major TNA. Oh, you noticed? Yeah, you noticed both that. Both of these scenes are just but not TNA. the pool. So anyway, the teen girls are by the pool, and um. Is it Da Vinci's they were going to go to? I think so. I'm just looking at my notes and I just said, uh, we get it, Katzman, <laughs> TNA. <laughs> yeah. Sex shows. Sorry. So, yeah. The, and then what were they even talking about? Talking the, about all we talk about the, girls wants to go, the girls want to go clubbing. And Lucy's just like, I don't want to because all you guys care about is boys and I'm kind of over it. She's and swearing off men. No, she's and, and I laughed because one friend said, Oh, so you've had one bad experience. And I'm going, Several. hello? Someone has not been how paying well, attention. How, how well do you know? Every your, how damn well do you know disaster. Exactly. Yeah. So you need to come out and get yeah. fucking drunk, oh, let me Lucy. Count the we waves. need to get you drunk. Basically. Which right. she does. Which she does. She does. Yes. <laughs> my, neighbor, my neighbor just came outside. And, like, I saw her go. And we're... <laughs> you need to get fucking drunk. <laughs> but... Not not to jump ahead to the disco scene, but I just noticed how gratuitously long the scene was before it had any dialogue or anything yeah, going on. That's why I wrote, we get it, Katzman. TNA. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. I almost thought that they might have lifted some of it from the second episode of the series when... <laughs> when they go disco dancing? Yeah. Except we didn't have Pam and, and Bobby doing their little... Well, I think that one was I'm at the Longhorn, and this one was a different place. I, I don't think that was the Longhorn. Yeah. I post that every yeah, year. The, the little, little. Sometimes, sometimes it's a meme, mm -hmm. sometimes it's not. <laughs> <laughs> so good. 
But you get to see the white, um, the cream is turtleneck yeah. sweater and the tight jeans, the blurry on their jacket. <laughs> Bobby doing that spin move. Ooh. Uh, yeah. It's that's that's in, in the head. In the head. Amazing. In the head. Mm. I like mm. in the next scene here, Sue Ellen is fussing over JR as he's trying to do business from the hospital bed. And it's annoying the shit out of him. <laughs> he's like, what are you doing? You're just like, I'm trying to help you. Fluffing the pillow, and mm-hmm. you know, she, she's a fluffer, all right. Yeah, that's right. That's so funny because he like he's almost he's almost he's almost accusatory to her. Like, what, what? are you right. doing? Like, he's like, what is up with you? Yeah, he doesn't believe her. He doesn't believe that she's just being nice. Are you? Are you? And she's like, are you no. trying to set me up for divorce and he's again? Like, uh, what is it like? I almost believe that. I almost believe you mean that. Or I believe you mean that. Yeah. Well, she she like almost breaks down crying. She's like, I really care about you. And then he just looks at her and he's like, oh, my God. Like, I actually believe you. Yeah, she's like, like, you actually she's like, care I... about me? What? Okay. She's like, she, all you I took know some really is good that you're my husband there, woman in and you've been hurt. <laughs> and right now, I just want to be so close to you. Heavy makeout scene. Grab his hand at the end. <laughs> what the fuck? And Dara's like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. That's what it's yeah. like. Him in distress makes you horny. It's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> totally. She's like, I'm gonna go yeah. jump on that right yeah. now. Mm-hmm. And what one one note though? Before Jr. got off the phone, he said that uh, uh, with this uh, Freddie guy. Is you don't that, call Bobby. You call me. Bobby's just there to answer phones. Yeah. Right. So we we know where Jr. Yep. stands on the whole matter because oh, he's yeah. he's been seething from the hospital bed since he found out that Bobby's running the uh, com- company. Yep. And then we get that, we get that a little bit of a throwaway scene where it's does like Bobby trying to business again, but Pam is there serving him and iced then, tea, which yeah, they the never drink. The whole scene, but- <laughs> <laughs> and that's when we find out that he's just, he's like, they're not going to let me do anything. The only thing that I'm going to be concerned about is I'm going to try to settle this lawsuit with Marilee Stone because I think I can actually right. do that. If she sleeps with Marilee. And then the next scene is hilarious. Because we have the final scene. We have the final scene from Mr. Beamsky and Rug. Oh, is it the final scene ever? He went so. to Chicago after all, y'all. Oh, he did. A- yep. They found him to bring him back to Dallas in a Chicago hotel, but what his alibi was being in a Missouri motel room. Or checking into yep. checking no checking into a Missouri mm-hmm. hotel room. Yeah. So obviously he yep. must have been driving he, up to Chicago. That's what, yeah, he must have been yeah. driving because he's like whatever, and uh, he's come to the hospital to basically gloat and see Jr. in a hospital. But, bed, but he he, ne- is, he never goes in. All right. He doesn't go in. Yeah, that that is weird. Well, maybe he does. Maybe we just don't see it. No, because he's very. He asks uh, Kristen how Jr. is doing, and uh, he says, "Oh, he's doing very well." And that kind of disappointed oh. him. Oh, and then he's just like, "Whatever, I'm gonna leave." Yeah, and he tells Kristen uh, if she's ever in Chicago, blah 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 blah. You can run your fingers through okay. the beamskin rug, and uh, <laughs> I have two things to say. Number one, did anybody besides me, because I'm weird, notice his eyebrows? I mean, he always has bushy eyebrows. Yeah, but these look really like they decided, oh, we're going to keep your bushy eyebrow, but we're going to shape up. Oh, no, I did Like, they look like they're like, they like they're, they start here and they go down. Like. And they just really, and, um, and then number two, Melanie's hair looks like a dildo again. What? Melanie's hair looks like a dildo again. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it does. Yep. But if it's directly to the side, it looks like a straight brown dildo. This? I mean, no, okay. well, no, hold right on. I'm going to take a picture and then I'm going to like post it so yeah. people yeah. can see this. Okay. So the police are leaving the stone estate just as Bobby pulls stone in. Stone estate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and Marilee is still standing outside as the police mm-hmm. are driving away. Mm-hmm. And her hair looks different to me. I don't know why. Is it different? A little bit. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it just looked maybe a little, a little darker and a little shorter. Yeah. Like she's this is where we see shades of slutty Marilee. <laughs> it's the beginning. I don't understand this scene yeah. at all. She's coming uh, out. She's, she's super upset because she is a suspect in shooting JR. 
and says that no wonder Sue Ellen became a drunk because Jared's a vulture. And then she's really upset and she misses Seth. But then she's also like coming on to Bobby at the same time. And like, I know everybody, she's a creeper. Everyone grieves differently, but what's happening? It's called sympathy. It's, it's called pity it's sex. <laughs> she wants pity sex. Yeah. Maybe, may, I don't know, man. I don't know what's happening. Well, and this is interesting. No, she's just, she's just slutty, merely. Well, slutty, this slutty. is funny because, <laughs> or um, just, we find out it is indeed her company. Right, we do. Yeah. And he's like, well, you were the brains behind, you know, your daddy started it. And then you were the brains that really made it took off. And, and then Seth, like, uh, you were right for whatever reason. So I'm wondering where, like, when her, when she married Seth Stone and he came into the company, is that like when they changed the name of the company? I mean, Stonehurst, what was her maiden name? Do we know? Maybe, Hurst. Yeah. Maybe Hurst. Possibly. Merrily Hurst. Merrily Hurst. Stonehurst. And then so it became Stonehurst because... Maybe like, okay, so in my headcanon fanfic, she was like working at the company with her dad as like, or in or her early 20s or whatever, and then married Seth, and then it became like, oh, she has to take her yeah. place as his and wife. Yeah, I think was a little older than her because the I actor wonder, himself obviously. is a little older. Yeah. And she obviously isn't too attached to him because... Fern Fitzgerald never met the but actor I, who played her husband. Least, they so. at least had a child, or t- <laughs> they had they had a couple of kids. Because I remember her telling Sue Ellen when she was pregnant, well, with my first, and I was like, oh, "But we never met any nice of Marilee's kids." That's true. Wait, he convinces her oh. to settle for five hundred thousand. Like he's trying to be kind of like a hard ass, I think, but also he's trying to be nice because her husband just died and so he like he's just he like uses logic and then appeals to her ego by he's, saying like you are the real brains behind this like you can do this which i think sparks her to go on and then but he's, he's doing good cop bad cop at the, at the same time and then yes. he's like you know you're gonna just walk away with five grand so you should just take the five grand from me and then you know you know five hundred thousand Oh, 500, sorry, sorry, yeah, 500,000. Five, five grand, that's $5,000, five that's that's chump yeah. change. No, 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 sorry. <laughs> Math is not my strong suit, guys. Number one thing to know about me. I'd be, so, I'd be speak good English. Too. Number, me too. 500 grand. Yeah. And um, so, and and then, and she's just, and she thinks about it for a moment, and then she's like, ah, and then he just instantly, like, turns into a jerk again. I'm like, Bobby, what? I don't know. It's weird, but it worked. It ended up working. She took it. And then then it was weirdly like she was coming out. She wanted to drinks with him and come on to him and all that. And then he wouldn't even stay for the drink. And I'm like, Bobby, maybe you should have stayed for that drink. Like her husband literally just killed himself because of your brother. And she just agreed to your plan. So So, just be nice, have a drink, humor her. And we don't know. 15 minutes. We don't know, not to get gruesome, the method in which she killed himself that's true and whether she found him and <gasps> right you know so yeah we don't know well, that makes it even worse your husband has like two weeks ago and you want to sleep with bobby by the pool i mean yeah, that's i don't everybody agrees to to I don't judge, everybody, but, well, it's just weird i don't know no judgment yeah. well remember she <laughs> never met her she, she never met her husband on screen so it's okay to move on quickly we're clubbing Let's, Let's go to the this is our gratuitous TNA shots. Lots of TNA See? dancing in the club. They seem like they're having a great time, except for Lucy. Uh, she looks so funny when she's drunk. Um, but right before they show her the first time in the blue sequins dress, and she's like, mm-hmm. I like trying to keep her drink up. Um, love the mm-hmm. outfit, the cream top with the black uh-huh. leather pants. Wish I could wear those. I could never wear those, but they look great. Yeah, love them. Disco. So good. And I thought disco was dead at that point, and they were burning records in Comiskey Park. That's about when they started, like, 80, 81, but they didn't really. But it people did, still because people still liked it. So, people, like, literally, that's a, the era that I was listening to, like, disco Gloria Sesame Street Gaynor records. and I Will Survive. And oh, yeah, Disco Duck. Was disco awesome. Duck, yes. Disney. Exactly. It was still going strong. It was, I mean, there's still disco, honestly. It's just a, a genre. There, were, there was, yeah, and there was just closet disco people for about five yeah. years. And then it was like, yeah. okay. Yep. Um, so the Lucy's just sitting there, just getting drunk as fuck at okay, the table. Wait. Uh, a side note there on the disco. Yeah. The big moment that symbolized, you know, the basic disco sucks thing was the, all the burning of the records at 
Comiskey Park in Chicago. Mm. That happened July 12th of 1979. So this is... Right. It was also... Is, that was a big uh, anti-gay movement when they did that, too. Like, that, a lot of people mm-hmm. did it because of that reason. Right. So this was... Side note. This took place about seven, later. eight months later. Yeah. yeah. Then, Not that much. Yeah. Okay. Just but, as a side point. Well, but do this. Probably the people from the... It, like the southern, maybe that was just still really cool to them, and they hadn't quite gotten out of this oh, phase yeah, yet, you might. know. And it's also maybe. music copyright. Dallas exactly. using uh, generic, well, uh, generic. Beats. Disco. They do that on disco shows now and, too. Like th- they won't pay for like the license. Like they'll have a yeah. DJ come in and do like his own mix of shit. And then when you then when you like try mm-hmm. to like Shazam or SoundCloud right. and, and try to hear the name of it. It doesn't come up. Like you have to go deep Google it. searching for this right. shit, and it's like, oh, it was this mix by this DJ in 2008. And I'm like, <laughs> it's because now all those shows in the 80s that actually did use like licensed music, now we can't have because Royalties. they didn't figure out the rights for it. Back the to Knott's Landing, where Lisa, Lisa Hartman did. was on there as a yeah. singer, and she was singing yeah. Separate Ways by Journey. She mm-hmm. was singing, um, I, she sang a lot she of singing stuff songs by probably. Survivor. and um, Like all, uh, the Wonder Years uh, took forever to come out because of the well, license She was singing music. Laura Branigan songs. She was singing, you know, all this they read on they read on the music on all that like on 90210 if you watch that on Hulu it's not the same music because they had to replace music and then it's not the same and they did it's like they a, did that on Cheers when uh, Kirstie Alley's character's favorite song was you've lost that love and feeling yeah. by the righteous brothers and instead in one episode they played unchained melody and they even said <sighs> You've lost that love and feeling. And then they turn on we the music unchained. and it's Unchained Melody. Yeah. So, yeah. It and sucks. another Dallas sighting on Cheers was Beth Toussaint, oh. who played Tracy Lawton. Oh, nice. Just keeping track of all those. Yeah. Um. So anyway, so the girls want to leave because there's not any cute boys there that they want to dance with. And then Lucy just gives them a lecture about oh, how there's more okay. to life than boys, you guys. <laughs> all right, Lucy. Lucy, so, you ain't so did this happen. I mean, like. <laughs> She's, when she read she Madame Bovary Bovary. and she was like, reading is awesome, you guys. She was reading Madame realize. Bovary to impress her professor that she wanted no, but to she got really, Yeah, she but did. she got really into it because she was she was actually reading that book. She was into it. Yeah. And then she ended up boinking the professor only to find out he was married. Right. So she learned, she's <laughs> like, there's more to life. There's more to life. And they're just like, yeah, okay, you're being a party pooper. And then then they want to stay because then some cute boys come and then Lucy's just like, Ugh, I'm out of here and leaves even though she's super drunk. She, she staggers out and the, the there's the valet guy played by Lee McCluskey like, who doesn't have a name. Lee McCluskey. Puts her in a cab, tells no. the cab to take her home. Doesn't yeah, know where is, her home is. Which is a very nice thing. He could have just given her those keys, but he played it safe and yes. paid for her cab. And it was nice. It gives and the driver $10. So, uh, how far is $10 going to get you in a taxi? Apparently all the way back to South Fork. So probably. Yeah. 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 How did, how did Lucy even remember where she lived? She was so drunk. She's Lucy Ewing. I'm sure, I'm sure you knew who she was. She's in all yeah. the papers. Yeah, I'm Lucy Ewing. Take me to the South Fork. <laughs> the South Basically, Fork. She all she probably all she probably had to do was say South Fork, and the guy was like, "All right, can we stop at these stores first?" All right, uh, I'm gone. Yeah, I know where you at. Yep, you're the yep. Ewings. You you're on the front page of the paper every morning. Yep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. And then we cut to a detective showing up at Cliffs mm. to talk about the shooting, and he's eating cold pizza, not Chinese food. Yeah, cold pizza. And, and they have a search warrant for his place. And because they want to look for a gun. And he's like, yeah, it's in the <laughs> drawer. <laughs> Don't touch that, sir. Don't touch that, Mr. Burns. And I guess, I mean, it is Texas. So it's probably pretty common for just everyone to have a gun. So not a big they deal. They say it was a 38 caliber, I believe. They did. Yes. Yeah, that was 38 caliber. Um, and then they want him to come downtown to talk. And he's like, all right, cool. Let's do this. Let's <laughs> he's just resigned. Like he knew it was, it was coming. That right there tells me he didn't do it. Oh yeah, totally. And that, but he knew he was going to be a suspect. So he was like, yeah. all right. He was waiting for them mm-hmm. basically. Yep. He had no other purpose to the plot line at this point, except waiting for the police. Yep. <laughs> And then we cut to the hospital. The specialist is back from London and says JR has to have the operation. And uh, 
But Sue Ellen wants to see him before he goes into the operation, but he's been heavily sedated. And she sees him, and he reassures her that no one beats old JR. That's kind of mm-hmm. sweet. Like, he's he's being sweet but to her. I, he's I thought it was interesting, Hi. though, when she said she, she said she wanted to see JR for alone. Ellie tells him, tells her to go. Jock kind of looks off to the side like he's still. I'm like, if that's her husband. Leave yeah. it. You know what? You guys don't need to be all up in their business all the damn time because you are. Let let her they go are. and they talk to her are. him alone. Helicopter parents. Yeah. Helicopter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they don't get but like a minute alone anyway because the doctor, the door opens, just like Mrs. Ewing, and she's like, gotta go. <laughs> The nurse, the nurse was probably waiting out there, going, "Okay, f- she's been in there five, mm-hmm. four, three, two. Let's, I got to go in now. I got to get them <laughs> yeah. out of there." Yeah. The look on Jared's face after she leaves tells me yeah, that he's he, nervous. He's not going to let on that he's nervous. Exactly. Yeah. Only to us at well, home. Well, it's like it's right. at the beginning of the episode where yeah. he's like, "My legs, I, Sue Ellen, I can't feel my legs." And like that's that's probably what's running through his mind when she's like kissing him goodbye and saying I'll see you after surgery. He's like, yeah, no, number one, if I live. Number yeah, two, if I can maybe. fucking walk again. Right. Yeah. That's right. It's almost like he's having a, a moment of um, reckoning. Mm-hmm. Mortality, even of some oh, sort. Yep. Yes. Yep. Bobby's leaving for the hospital. Pam Bobby's- is swimming because. Pam doesn't give a fuck. But my thing is, they, they did that so many times. Like they made sure they showed Pam like alone or just like in a small moment. The entire episode, they did it like three times. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that was like in, when uh, Lucy pulled up with Gary. Bobby's at the pool, just like, oh, right, yeah, just, right. just chilling, whatever. <laughs> Y'all, so they always, those early episodes, those one piece low cut every single time. And see through. Didn't she have it into her contract at some point? I thought I heard that she had it in her contract at some point that she was only allowed to appear in a swimsuit X number of times. Oh, probably because I'm sure Catherine tried something. to put her in one all the time. Mm-hmm. And when and when and when Patrick came back, uh, like, when after his year off, mm-hmm. he had it in his contract that he was not to be shirtless in the opening scenes, in the <laughs> opening credits. Oh, that makes sense. I never so. even thought about that. I bet he was like, ugh. Every time we saw it, can you imagine <laughs> like yourself? Cause everyone else is like, Oh, they look great. But you're, you're looking at yourself like, Oh my God, I don't have a shirt on. So <sighs> Cliff now calls Pam to tell Pam that he's at the police station. Most of the night. Why did he wait so long to call her? Did he want to let her sleep or. Maybe I I mean, there's nothing she could do really. And he's probably hoping that she can come pick him up soon. Oh, yeah. cause he didn't drive there. So that's true. Yeah. Because if he drove his own car, he could have. There could have. Yeah. Why can't he get an Uber? Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, just call an Uber, Cliff. God. The first Uber in the history of the United States <laughs> was Cliff Barnes on the way to the. Yeah. We can um, pretend. So then we cut to the person who we don't know his name, but it's Mitch studying in his apartment with seventy and billion. I'm bucks. sorry, Lucy. Lucy, how the hell did you smart. get his address? Like you just. You just show up at this place and be like, the first thing I said was, yeah. be creepy. She probably remembered that he was cute. It's probably the one thing she remembered. So I bet she went to the Could club have- and was just like, hey. And there's no, no, like, 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 there's no privacy like, laws that- in 1980. So. No. And the, the, ex- the exterior shot of that club is going to be mm-hmm. used over and over again throughout the series and in... I think it was on not see, like, too, was the used. thing nowadays Ooh, is like if she had showed up to his work, like it, to the club to thank him and give him the money back, mm-hmm. it would have been different. But to show up at his yeah. apartment, even right, super creepy back then, it had been it, even now, the, the, sure. he'd be like, this girl's fucking psycho. Like what? And he. Right. Let's not forget that Muriel yeah. had Professor Forrester's oh, well, that was a address. Th- Back then, yeah, that people was, had yeah. like directories, you know, like yeah. Well, not only that, yeah, but like it. yeah, like schools, but churches, and school. churches, community shit. Like there was a like almost like a little phone book put together, a directory. A directory. Yeah, because yeah. I remember yeah. like seeing the church directories, and it had like my parents' like address and phone number, our names and mm-hmm. stuff. And I'm just like, yeah, I. We had the UMass phone book, but it didn't give out the faculties. 
in oh, no, it didn't get for their office. office. So it just gave the, the students in the school, like, but you signed this form, like, I think like yeah. in the early 90s, you signed a form saying it put you in there. Yeah. But then it, it, like, I think I was like a freshman or sophomore in high school when all privacy laws and HIPAA and all that stuff started. Um, they, it might have been later than that, they made it my parent, you, you have to sign a whole separate form saying, you can be in the directory or you can only have your name and your phone number, like not your address or, you know, and I'm sure now it's like name and email. Yeah, or something. Now, now with school shootings happening all the time, it's like, you can't trust yeah. anybody. In the nineties no at my college, our student numbers were our social security numbers. My, and ours were in high school. The, we, they would list like a list outside the door, like our, our scores on exams by our social security number. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we did. <laughs> Yeah, well, somebody could somebody from today could travel back, just go and write down all those social security numbers and then screw over your identities. Totally. And then down the hall where or you could yeah. sign up for like credit cards. So if like you'd been thinking, yeah, like a criminal back then, you could have just like gone to find someone's name and their social security number, sign them up for a credit card that was like whatever. Identity theft. That's why we have laws now. <laughs> all the shit we used to yeah. do that is now like suddenly a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, because that's because somebody did Damn something it. super questionable. Damn it, you guys. Like show up. Why do you have to go? Showed up at somebody's. What? Now, why are y'all gonna go do stupid, creepy ass shit like that? Come on, you you ruined it for everybody else. Right. What the fuck? I know. So Lucy, 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 who had sworn <laughs> off men, is now flirting with the valet. Right, and he's not into it because he's just like, "Oh, that was nice of you to bring me back the money. I'd ask you in, but I'm studying, so." And then he, he never said if, if he wanted to go out with someone, he mm -hmm. was going to be the one to do the asking. That's the first sign of this male chauvinist. But, um, yeah. I also feel like at the same yeah. time, Lucy Macho maybe awesome. tried to be like, hey, and he's like, I'm not that kind of guy. You know, I want to get to know you and we're going to do this right. And I got to study. So it's weird. Like I had I had two different takes on that. Well, she was, he like, was, he was trying boundaries. to set boundaries where he's like, I'm, I'm studying. Because after, after she left, he sat back down. He just kind of smirked a little bit. Yeah. He did. It was a really long shot afterwards where he was just like, <laughs> Basically, what the fuck was it was, that? It was like, Lucy was being awkward. told no. She didn't know what to do. She was like, That's true. my what? sex appeal is not working. What the fuck? Right. She's like, but did you see my boobs and my hair? And he's my just short like, little five inch, five foot frame and those big like, boobs did not turn you on sir i'm gonna yeah, slam and, the door like, i'm sorry i'm in med school i'm trying to become a doctor and yeah while you're very appealing i got shit to do so yeah. uh and that's like oddly right. and pissing yeah. her off and appealing to her at the same time i think <laughs> oh totally she's gonna be totally Ooh, drawn because, to that now because that's lucy it's I think that that's like the okay, first that's mm -hmm. like the, the bossy kind of thing, uh, the daddy kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then if you really think about it, even though he is attractive, mm -hmm. he's still older. That's true. Yep. And so she's still doing that. And in that, yep. she's getting a younger guy, but he's still older, that still has all the daddy qualities, and he's mm -hmm. gonna be successful. Yeah. She's it's, like, that's when her light bulb goes. <laughs> do, do, do. <laughs> it's also the it must be a Ewing trait that I want what I can't have right now. Oh, yeah. It's the chase. Because she's like it's JR. Good. Exactly. Again. Which begs the question was JR really her father? And that's why he. <laughs> if there are a lot of similarities. They would, neither one of them would ever admit it to Edge each other. Right, ever. But they that's are true. more alike than anybody else on that show. Yep. The, the two of them had a real strong knack for one liners. That's true. Yeah. Yes. Another similarity. Well, he As really six. was kind of like a father figure in the mm -hmm. house there, you know? He was, the, yeah, he was the only one. That, well, yeah. Because Bobby was younger and like Bob, off Bobby doing was stuff. Out, out spreading the three B's around. Right. And JR was in the, I mean, she had her grandparents, but he was like a, a dad age when <laughs> she was growing up. Right. right. Yeah. So Cliff, Cliff and uh, the Detective Horton are playing cards yeah. while they're. Yeah. While they're waiting for the test results. And then when Hor uh, Horton spots Pam and he uh, gets all like googly eyed and Cliff goes, oh, that's my sister. And Horton goes, oh, I sp looks like I spent the wrong the night with the wrong uh, Barnes. <laughs> Gross. I'm yeah. like, that's just disgusting. Males. <laughs> and then kidding. he warns him, like, the, it, the tests come back and it's not, the, the, the 
gun and the bullet that was in JR don't match, obviously. And then he's like, well, still don't leave town. And right. like, You're oh, still a suspect. Fine. Whatever. Just because it wasn't from your gun doesn't mean you didn't have access to another gun. Right, right, right. right. And then we cut to the surgery. The nerve is not severed. They find the bullet. Pressure uh, is dropping. Yeah, blah, but blah, he's, blah. Not as, he's not as stable as they thought. So, you know, still touching. Oper- I call that more operating room mumbo jumbo. Yeah, exactly. Seen elsewhere on Dallas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then the nurses are playing secretary again because, Mr. Ewing, there's a call for you. And then they're like, which one? They're like, I don't know. I'm a nurse. <laughs> I'm yeah. They're like, I'm not your secretary. <laughs> and right. I noticed Jock and Ellie were sitting together. Sue Ellen was sitting alone in a corner mm. behind them. Bobby goes to take the call because it was for Mr. Ewing. They didn't specify which one. Yeah. Jock's like, I don't, I don't want to touch anybody else. And it was uh, Freddie Hopper tracking him down at the hospital. Right. I bet he was trying to talk to Jr. is what I think. Because he wanted to talk yeah. to Mr. Ewing. So my guess is he was trying to talk to Jr. but Jr. was in surgery. So. Right. Because there were three Mr. Ewings in the hospital. Right. The right, right. And then, uh, so Bobby can't make a decision about, I mean, about anything because he knows, of course, that he's going to be just like second guess. So then there's a showdown in the waiting room where Bobby's like, like, I'm not going to do this at all. Or you're going to give me like control, 100% control to run Ewing oil in writing. In writing. Uh, and then Jack's like, done. Let's do it. Yep. That didn't please Sue Ellen in the background. Right. Which, is probably why, which is probably why they had her sit behind. Yeah. So the camera could just kind of. So you could just see her face. See her in the background yeah. skulking over the whole scene. <laughs> um, but Jair's in recovery now and he's out of surgery, uh, but it's too soon to tell if he can walk again. Of course it is. Then we end on Jr. in the recovery room, room whilst Sue Ellen looks on. Like, end credits. The end. I give it 3.5 bourbons and some random college girl TNA. Close to mine. I give it a 3.5 and a club full of hot tits and ass disco chicks. (laughs) 3.85 and a round trip plane ticket from Knott's Landing. Nice. There you go. I say 3.75 and Vaughn Leland filing chapter 11. Nice. Good one. Good one. You, you want Vaughn's papers there. I don't give a shit about his papers. He just, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, thank you for joining us. Uh, hey, if you would like to support us, there's many ways you can do that. The first way is just to review us online. Maybe we'll read your review on the air. Yeah. Write a, if you write a little review and we see it, uh, we will totally read it. Another way you can do that, you can support us, is to join our Facebook group and to follow us on our social media on Instagram or Twitter. Now, on Facebook, we have a page and a group. That's if true. If you do the page, you like the page, but you request to join the group. Right. And the page, we just post like ran, like when we have an episode and like news. But our group, we discuss things. Um, we were just recently talking about like was West Parmley maybe really jock or no? Because I guess that's a really, really controversial thing. Exactly. Apparently, it is. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. So come and, you know, talk some smack with us. Because uh, we love to talk about all things, even if they're mostly if they're really controversial. Uh, and you can also tag us on social media uh, in your Instagram story or on Facebook. And if we see it, we'll repost it. And, and you can also donate to our bourbon fund, which really helps to just like keep the lights on and keeps the bourbon flowing. Yes. Do we still, do we still have the merchandise? We still do have the merchandise. I'm actually going to be working uh, on different merchandise because I actually, there's a thing that happened that uh, we can't get into our account on Teespring. And um, oh. so we don't have access to any of that money. So I'm going to be starting a new. Oh my um, God. Yeah. Yeah. That's a thing that happened. So anyway, we'll come up with a new uh, merch thing and we will let you know as soon as we do. 
There's one other way I was thinking of that people could uh, support us too. It's to like, if you're a part of a Dallas group, you could always like mention us in the groups. Cause I feel like a lot of people don't know about us and that would be like a good audience. Just be like, Hey, I listen to this podcast and I've done it a few times, but I feel weird like tooting my own. So if anybody else wants to do it, shameless self promotion. (laughs) Right. And also, Keep note that uh, South Fork Ranch every Friday is doing um, at 9.30 Central Time. So figure out your time zone. Do the math. They are doing a almost like a home shopping thing from their gift shop. And there's some pretty interesting things that turn up there. South Fork merchandise and Texas stuff. And, and they're working towards in the next several weeks, po- probably having an online website that you can order from. So if you want merchandise from South Fork, cool. just keep, keep an eye on the uh, South Fork uh, Facebook page. Awesome. Today, today is April the 19th. So the show is tomorrow, April the 20th. So it, you'll probably hear this after the date, but tomorrow's episode of Real Housewives of Dallas is the one about South Fork. Okay. Awesome. What, what network are they on? Can you give us that? Uh, Bravo. They're on Bravo. I mean, it's- Thank you for joining us on the Ewing Barbecue. Uh, until next time. Bye. Bye, y'all. Y'all come back now, you hear? I declare bankruptcy. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Next on Dallas. Wake up. Wake up. I keep dreaming that I'm the one that pulled the trigger. That I shot Jay off. It was decided that as long as you're laid up, I'm to run Ewing Oil. I gotta admire you. You saw the opportunity and you took it. And I'd like to do it the best way I can, and that means without interference from you. I'd never do anything to hurt you. We're brothers. 